I think a lot of people need to utilize negativity to get to positivity. So your negativity was, I don't want to go back to working in a bank. I don't want to do that. That's a negative. Going away from pain. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're running from something. Negative, negative, negative. But I think that's almost like the rocket fuel that gets you then to the point where you can convert to being positive. I'll try and talk about this in a financial way. It's so easy to say money doesn't matter when you've got money because you don't have bills coming in, you don't have people saying it. So it's like when you say having a scarcity mindset, so you don't have a scarcity mindset, go, oh, you should take risks, blah, blah, blah. It's easy to say that when you've got a little bit. Absolutely. When you have nothing, you need that negative mindset of I don't want to be broke for the rest of my life to make some money. Then once you get to, to have a little bit, a little bit in the bank, whatever it's gonna be, you need to then switch your mindset to an abundance mindset. There's money everywhere. I'm gonna go after it. Rather than thinking when you're broke and sitting there like, oh, these people told me to have a, you know, an abundance mindset and I, there's money everywhere. Cool, get past the first step of the ladder first and work your ass off. That's the, the difference. You said, um, people say they don't have time to carve out bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Look at your phone. Look how much time you spend on Instagram. Look how much time you spend on Facebook. Look how much time you spend on YouTube watching us because we're amazing. And really think about, do I spend 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day thinking about myself? You know, or do I put my headphones in, go on the train for 45 minutes? What are you doing for 45 minutes on the train listening to some podcast or listening to some music? Think, just have no music on, have a notepad out and write out what you want to do with your life. There's time everywhere. You know, when you really realize... I, I, people always say life is short and there's no time. I think life is long and there's loads of time. And again, that change of perspective gives you more freedom. And I have found the more successful I've become in, in my life in lots of different facets has been by carving out more time for myself to sit there and do nothing. And that's when I think about strategy and think about where my life is going and think about what I can do with my life and, and, and my purpose and why I'm here. And most of the time, it always comes down to family and trying to make connections and friendships and all that sort of stuff. And it comes down to none of the material bullshit that you get fed. And then understanding, I made a video on this, a YouTube video about like everything is marketing and you are sold everything. Understanding what do you actually want? What do you want from life that you actually want and not what the world is telling you to get? Like these things are not important unless there is a deep rooted reason for it. And then maybe you need to solve that deep rooted reason right even if that comes down to doing what we were talking about earlier where i go back in time in my mind utilizing that that the thing that you said the five things go back in time in my mind and i change my negative past to a positive past and my my positive past then fuels me to to live a positive life so i think people definitely have enough time to to think for themselves and, and to, to spend time thinking about what they want their life to be they just uh they just never been they never thought of it because the whole system is built against us. I mean, you, yeah. Um, the One of the best things that you could do in your life is actually taking the time to think about what it is. What would I, as I said, as you said, what would I really like my life to look like? How would I want it to be? And as you quite rightly said, it's like, unless you take that time to sit in silence and, and think about what do I really want, you can't separate yourself from the noise of the world and what are your opinions and what are other people's opinions, right? Because most of what your beliefs are are probably hand-me-down opinions from other people from your parents, your friends, teachers, the government, the media. And so how do you know what you really want versus what's a belief that's been programmed into your head, right? And I see so many people that are afraid to take that leap of faith, go after what they really want in life because they're holding on and clinging on to a belief that was put in their head by somebody else and they're not aware of it. So I need to pay the mortgage, I need to stay in this job. But there's guys who are still working at the same bank that I quit who were holding on for a redundancy payment. In case I get a redundancy payment of 20 grand, or 30 grand, 40 grand. And to me, it's like, it's kind of sad because you're holding on. I know guys who've been there for 20 years waiting for a redundancy payment of 20, 40, 50 grand or whatever, right? In the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of money compared to the quality of life and the time. You can't get the time back. You can always make money. If you get a good business and start a business and go after what you want, you can make that in a month, make it in a week. But these people have got such a, the, this mindset, this, we call it a matrix mindset, right? This, these beliefs that have been given to them or handed them down, they're not serving them and they're holding on to them and it's costing them everything. I think, I mean, that must be what you deal with day in, day out. I was going to say, um, through your coaching and everything that you're doing, what do you think the number one, when you deal with clients, what is the number one thing that's holding them back in their, in their own minds that they, that these things that they're creating, what, what is it? So it's their, it's their paradigm about what's possible. For, like, just like we've been spoken about, <clears throat> it's the paradigm about what's possible for them. 
And if you want to know what your paradigm is, your paradigm is your collection of unconscious beliefs and habits, right? So they may not have necessarily been, these beliefs may not have been put there by you, but it's your responsibility to change them and create new ones for yourself, right? And so these, this paradigm comes in and tells them, well, you can't leave your job or you, you can't get coaching because you've got to do this, this, and this. And it's like, they don't, it's, as you quite rightly said, they find it difficult or challenging. It's normal because we're all human, right? To separate what that paradigm is, these negative beliefs that don't serve them versus who they are and what they really want. And so I think spending, the more that you can get in tune with you and understand what you really want, then it's much more, it's much easier to go after what you want in life. But I think it's very difficult though, unless you have people in your life or you have a coach or a mentor or something like that, as you quite rightly said, the third person who can hold a mirror to you, it's very difficult to be objective with yourself. So I found I've got coaches in my life, had coaches, had mentors, as, you, as have you, had you in fighting. And I've benefited from it immensely because it holds up a mirror to you and says, look, this is how you're thinking. This is where it's holding you back. And this is where you need to change your mentality or your perspective. And I think if you don't have that in life, it, unless you're an extremely perceptive individual, someone like Andrew Tate, for example, who's extremely introspective and, and, perspect, and um, perceptive, it's very, very challenging. So I think that everyone can benefit from having a corner man in their life. I think... The reason he's like that, and the reason I'm like that, and the reason I think most people aren't, is because when you have 50 plus professional fights, the first fight you ever have, you make loads of mistakes, like everything, everyone. You crap when you start. And those loads of mistakes that you make, you watch back on video and you think, oh. It's like when you watch, your, when, you, when you make a video, or you do your first podcast, you do it. Cringe. You cringe, it's horrible. We first you watch your first YouTube video, horrible. First interview, I, felt, I remember the first time I got interviewed and I'm like, yeah, I yeah, still yeah. remember, actually thinking about it, I still remember the first time I walked into a cage, it was in Southend in, on Sea, my first amateur bout, and I walked in and I remember now, because when I watched it back, the camera angle of me, I stood still, like, and just, I remember I had a mouthpiece in it. I, I just remember it because I looked gormless, like a, a retard. And I was like, who is this idiot? And you see yourself like from a third person from watching that fight back and you see all the mistakes that you make. Even the walkout, even that like, I talk about there, standing there looking like an idiot. It's an entertainment, right? You can't entertain. You can't just stand there and look like an idiot. You're on TV in, in a way. Um, and then when you watch the fight, your left hand's down, you, you swing like this, you know, whatever it's going to be. But you improve. So you look at that video and you think, how do I make this better? Okay, so now I need to keep this hand up. I need to make this footwork. I need to improve this, take down defense, whatever it is. You analyze and you improve. And you do that again, refine, again, 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 again. And that's how you reach mastery, right? The idea of being a black belt or getting good at mixed martial arts is you refine the same tools over and over again. Boxing's so simple. There's only eight punches. Maybe there's more. But in my head, there's only eight. There's probably more. Um, but you have to refine those over and over and over and over again. But no one really does, unless you go through fighting, you said about uh, tape, then you have to apply that mindset to life and look at things that have gone wrong in your life and thought, why did that go wrong? You don't have it videoed so you can watch it. That's the difference. So it's like you can't sit there and think, watch it back and be like, oh, I really messed up. When I spoke to that girl, why did she walk off? Well, maybe because I approached her aggressively or I just said the wrong thing or I was insulting or whatever it is. You know, I mean, that's exactly what I would do because I'm aggressive and insulting. That's pretty much my whole demeanor. But it's like understanding the mistakes that you make and then analyzing those mistakes and then improving those mistakes. It's basic, right? It's simple. But most people don't even take that time to analyze. And that's the difference between a good fighter and a bad fighter. But they always talk about when you're going to have an opponent, what do you do? You watch the fight tape. When you watch the guy, how many times did you watch him? What, what does he do? How does he step? How does he move? So you look at your opponent over and over again and you analyze him. And when you're analyzing your opponent... You're trying to pick holes and work out what's, what's bad about him. Then you're going to capitalize on those mistakes. So that's John Jones is the perfect example. He watches loads and loads of fight tape. So that's how he become elite. And then he writes down all the ways he can beat that person. And he repeats them over and over and over again. Again, you take that to life. And if you're going to go after a job or go after a girl or go whatever, if you envision it and you understand what to do and you take the steps and then it fails, sweet. Now I know I did that wrong, I did this wrong, and you can improve. But I think people don't take the time to analyze their life. They just live it. There's that famous quote. Um, I'm, I was, my memory's not as good as yours, so I'm not good with the quotes. Uh, but it's, uh, you shouldn't work in your business, you should work on your business. I've got no idea who said it. I don't know where it's from, but I've been told it a million times. And I always say, you know, you shouldn't just live your life. You should think about where your life is going. 